Welcome. I am with Jean-Guy de Gabriac and the lovely Alison Ainsworth of Marriott. Welcome, Alison. Welcome, Jean-Guy. Um, getting straight to the point, one of the topics at the World's Fund Wellness Convention London next month is running a better business in the post-pandemic world. Alison, how has Marriott done that or doing that? Yeah, I mean, I think like everybody, we were, you know, the hospitality industry was incredibly hard hit as, and we kind of include spa in that as well. So I think the first thing that we had to do was really take a real look at our business. Originally, our business is really kind of around about spas in hotels. So a lot of it is kind of come, our spa business came from hotel guests on the commercial end of it. We really first had to look at that business and do a real deep dive with all our spas because across Europe, Middle East and Africa, we operate over 76 countries and all those are different. So one kind of fix all really doesn't work. We had to really look at individual countries, individual spas and the brands for, uh, to start off with. And it was really kind of a very targeted approach that we took. And with that, we always always had to understand that, you know, we needed probably to pivot our business from what was commercial business into a much more local guest. And what did that local guest need? So once we'd kind of attached the, the research and really understood what the market was wanting, we then had to really look at how we got that local guest. And so we really had to really look at our menus. We really had to um, pr prioritize the key signature treatments, those high yielding margin ones. And we also took a quite a radical approach and we removed quite a lot of those treatments to our high margin, to our successful su um, treatments that people wanted. That also meant that we could then look at our labor. Obviously, like everybody, we lost a lot of our teams, not because we made them redundant or anyway, but because actually a lot of our, our uh, therapists moved back to their original home countries, just, just left their country in which they were working. So we had to dig again. We really had to look at what we did in our, on our, with our labor force. That meant that we had to really look at yield managing. We couldn't open the spas as long as we had previously. So we really had to target those key occupancy days and we had to look at those therapists and how we worked. So we were really kind of looked at how we scheduled and we tried to work in, in kind of eight hour blocks. Now I know that may seem kind of a bit an unusual, but it was the best way in which we could maximize our revenue opportunities, but also give time to the therapists as well. So at least they had a schedule when they knew they were working. So it maximized their efficiency for us as well. And then we also looked at how we how could we drive more revenue from those guests that were coming in? What did the guests want? But how could we add to that? And what we didn't want to do because of the issues with labor was add more labor cost into that. That just that just made the problem exacerbated the problem. So what we really looked at was how could we add what we call enhancements into that 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 um, guest treatment. So we made sure that we didn't we didn't offer any more treatments uh, less than an hour and most of those we pivoted to 90 minutes and within that we offered an, an enhancement which was an enhanced service for which the guest paid for but it didn't increase the cost of that treatment for us as a business it actually gave much greater value for the guests that were paying for, but it was within the hour or the 90 minute structure of the team that we got. So we were maximizing the revenue from the hours that we got and the guests coming through the door. That's, that's excellent. And is there a particular example you can give as to what sort of treatments you were doing? Yeah, absolutely. So what we would do, so somebody getting you know, a like most businesses, you know, over 70% of our business is massage. So how do you get that upsell onto a massage? Well, it's difficult, we all know, if you're trying to retail on the back of massage, but if you can actually add an enhancement into that treatment, which may be a, 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 a small facial in there, it may be some, um, it may be a, a hot stone inclusion rather than just a normal massage. Instead of transitioning from, a, we transition from a kind of a body balm, instead of just a normal massage oil. Um, we included those things, kind of um, lip and eye treatments that you could always inc include within that one hour treatment that didn't extend the time, didn't extend the labor cost in there. And the cost of sale was very, very minimal, but the enhanced value to the guest was immense. And so what we found is probably one in four of all our treatments that, that we were delivering then, actually we were able to sell an upsell to which is a fantastic way of generating profit without actually increasing your costs. But the guests felt that they actually got a great value in that space of time. And to get that one, one in four, we thought was really quite successful. 
And, and then the other thing. And, and, and also, interestingly, so therefore, you're actually extracting more revenue from the client, but he or she's getting much better value. So you're not like some properties have done lowering costs to the client and therefore potentially changing the client mix. Did you have any pushback from clients on that? No, we, we, we didn't. And again, possibly because we then targeted the local. So what we saw that people now, and I think I think a lot of us are seeing that, is actually, you know, taking self-care, looking after wellness, looking after yourself, investing time, uh, you know, and money in, in your own well-being. At this, I think it kind of kicked in during the pandemic, as we all kind of felt that. But after, now that we're transitioning into a new world order kind of thing, I think ab absolutely people are willing to pay. They've kind of reevaluated what wellness and self-care uh, and the price they're willing to pay for that. And I do believe that that's much more enhanced than it ever was. And we've never really, we've never really wanted to undersell that. We've really seen, even in the pandemic, we've really focused on saying, what is value? How do we enhance experience? Once you get into that price cutting cycle, we possibly, we personally believe that you, you, you've nowhere really to run to but if you add on and you layer on and the guest experience becomes paramount that's what the guest remembers they don't remember that extra five or ten dollars that they may have paid for that treatment they go away with the emotion and that's what we're trying to get to and that's what kind of pre during the pandemic when we were opening and closing spas and having to restart our businesses it was that kind of strategy and that kind of philosophy that we held to that made sure that everything that we did followed those lines, that actually it was about enhancing the guest experience in every which way we can. Right. I, actually, I don't think people need to go to the conference now, um, Jean. Do you, don't you, do you, she said half of it, um, Alison. It's fun, uh, oh, fun. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Mark. It's, it, it's remarkable because the, the way we work, and you said it best, um, the World Spine Wellness Convention is the place where speakers speak less to say more. And in order to do that, it's not just about showing up uh, on the conference and then as answering questions and, and flipping through a, a, a presentation. It's really the preparation that we have with each speaker, with the speakers among themselves also sharing information that, so that they really add on each other. And in Alison's um, um, session on, on the Monday uh, at uh, 11 a.m., she will be joined by Marisa Kechero Dimitriadis, uh, traveling all the way from South Africa. She's the managing director of the Spy Consultants. And we will be joined also by Paul Hoko, who is the corporate director of wellness at Ducit uh, Hotels and Resorts. So there's lots coming this way. But I have another question for you, Alison, um, as the uh, corporate director, senior uh, corporate director for Spas and Wellness Marriott in. Europe, Middle East, and Africa. How do you see the convergence of wellness and technology? Because so many spas says, oh, no, 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 we're, we're high touch, we're high intentions, we're low tech. But with in, in the things that 2020 and 2021 brought is definitely uh, a fantastic boost in digitalization, use of technology. How are you integrating this with Marriott through apps, check-in, all the whole nine yards? I know I think I think it's a really good question because I think that it goes right from the start from the booking process all the way right through to the treatment and how we handle the guests through the journey and I mean what we did we we really focused on again on our digital strategy combining it with obviously people know of the Marriott Bonvoy app so we what we're really working to embed our spa app within the Bonvoy app so that those millions of, of Bonvoy guests who use our hotel automatically have access to the to the spas and can book in that functionality so moving to, to digital online bookings was key for us we again when you when we were struggling for you know receptionists in our spas being able to book digitally was a key for us we actually converted to about 70 percent of all our bookings were done online by book, by having that an online booking reservation system, which you which you manage and you yield manage to make sure that only those treatments that you want to sell at that price point that you want to sell available at the time you want it to be offered, 
by using that and using dig the, using that yield management strategy within your bar spa booking system, that can then generate all the, the, the treatment and the profitability that you need, but also it makes sure that your staffing and your make sure, making sure that your labor is effectively used, as well as, get, as I said before, enhancing that experience for the, for the guest. And then we took that all the way through into actually, you know, to, to a digital um, check-in. So when you when you book, you get your reservation. You can actually digitally check in. So again, hopefully, you know, making that transition for the guests, which they expect when they're buying anything else these days on an internet. That whole system is something which they're used to. It allows us all to manage the business a lot better as well. And then when we kind of come into this kind of whole area of what, where do treatments sit in that? Is it high touch and it's always a treatment, you know, with hands? Or is there a kind of a, a wellness element? And I honestly believe that, yes, there's a phenomenal, you know, view of wellness in the largest scale that we've seen in a long time and you know we're all we're all talking about and I'll, I'll talk about it in in the conference about things that we've done to really develop our pillars of wellness but I also believe that there's some wellness tech that goes alongside that as well and I say wellness tech and it's something that we're working on at the moment so how do you combine that need that the guest has for this uh, we all, all have it this kind of wellness and self-care which is more about being in tune with the natural with the kind of the natural world and and natural kind of body rhythms with actually results orientated uh, effective treatments that they really kind of want and so this isn't about doing anything which is invasive or hard but it's about using some of the technology out there within the equipment that's been developed that actually can provide some wellness tech uh, alongside some of our more traditional treatments and those are the kind of the two things we're looking at you know how do we make that how do we use digital to improve business and how do we use digital to improve the treatment experience Brilliant. And if I may, Mark, one more question before you, you, you carry on. Um, I'd like to, to take maybe a, a two minutes uh, of every, anybody's time to, to ask a very current question, because um, Marriott is not known for outstanding guest experience, uh, luxurious experiences, and having an eye on the top line and also on the bottom line. It has also a pulse on the heart of the team and the populations, not just the guests. What are you doing, Marriott, with the situation currently in Ukraine, in Russia, and in neighboring countries? Because you've done so much through tsunamis and Katrina. What is currently um, in place in this region of the world? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, it's, it, none of us can fail to be, you know, devastated by what's happening in that part of the world at the moment. And, and you're absolutely right. Marriott's always been a company, a global company that kind of has always stepped up when there's when countries have been in need. And you gave some great examples there. And um, so at the moment, um, we, we, we have what we call our kind of take care fund, which is a Marriott fund where we can mobilize, you know, millions of dollars um, to support those, um, those people in need. And we're actually doing that at the moment for Ukraine. Um, we're, all, we're also working with um, the World, uh, World Centre Kitchens to provide food. So actually from our hotels based in these countries, again, you know, around the but, but Poland, Hungary, etc., those neighbouring countries where we have hotels providing not just kind of shelter and accommodation for refugees, but also providing the food to those people, which is being then, which is then kind of being distributed by the, by, by the World uh, Central Kitchen. We're working with UNICEF again, donating money and working alongside with UNICEF on there. So again, there's some very, very kind of um, practical stuff as in opening hotels to refugees, feeding people, giving them the care and attention, but also some hard cash, which is going into those areas as well to support. And uh, and we, we still have to support our people. We have, we, we have two hotels in Ukraine, which unfortunately have just closed, but we have a lot of hotels open in Russia at the moment with a lot of our people still in there. So what we are doing again is supporting those people that, that, are, in, that are still working in the hotels. Well done, Alison. Well done, Marriott. Um, do you, a lot of properties have commented on the fact that they've lost corporate clients because of travel restrictions. Do you see, has that changed so far this year with, with Marriott? 
or is just um, coming back? We, we see it coming back. We most definitely see it coming back. Yeah, during the pandemic, it was that dec it did decimate our business. And again, that's why we did have to pivot to what we call our leisure guest. And what we did do is we, we picked up on, we, obviously, we've got a lot of um, hotels and resorts, and we have a lot of hotels which rely on a, um, a holiday destination as such. So we really did have to change that mix. And again, with the corporate mix in it, but we do see we do see that it's it is coming back. Um, what we what we do see, however, is that within that mix of business, we have still retained that local guest. So whereas before, and, and, and so we kind of say, you know, do these things have a silver lining? Well, in some cases they do. So what we've actually done and what we are seeing is that that breadth of guest has changed. So previously where we were reliant on the hotel guest, the corporate traveler, the person coming from the vacation, that's, that's coming back, but we've retained that local person. And so when we look at our business mix and how we look forward to the future, if we can retain that local element and we can layer on top of it, the new business that kind of comes back that's why we kind of we're looking at how we how quite a lot of hope for the future but it does mean we have to change our operation because the local guest requires different things to a hotel guest so we have we are kind of wrestling with that kind of you know a little bit of operational complexity as we move forward and how we can do that but yes we, we do see that kind of that business coming back slowly but surely and for us of course we were across Europe, Middle East and Africa. And so that what happened during the pandemic and the business that came back for different countries, because we were in, you know, we, just in Europe, Middle East and Africa, I look after 76 countries, all with the different vagaries of what spa could open, what could close, could you do open thermal, could you do facials, all that kind of stuff was, it was a, a melting pot for us to deal with. But what we have done is now is we have seen, especially in the Middle Eastern market, that business has come back more and faster than the European business. So we're kind of playing a little bit of catch up with Europe, but the Middle Eastern element of our business is absolutely key, especially you've kind of got all the, the, the kind of the expo kind of happening in Dubai at the moment that comes that's still there. That carried on through the pandemic, really successful for us. And then obviously you've got the World Cups coming up in the next year as well. So again, that's big business for Spa as well. Oh, indeed. And, and it's great to hear that you've potentially as coming out of this is that you've expanded your client base and yeah. with, with the happy problems of how to mix that. Ab absolutely. Um, and, and I think it, 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 it probably is a kind of a, an indication of uh, a business that we've never really gone for before because of the nature of our business being a hotel. So we've always kind of played that back, but especially now when it, 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 it's a part of the business that I think has surprised our kind of our head offices in some respects, but it has has kind of lent to a way in which we now look at hotels and how we develop a more of a resort spa element as opposed to just being kind of that one off hour treatment, etc. that the hotel guests would take. So where we can and we've looked at that hotel mix and said, right, OK, where have we got hotels which actually you know, are, are, are kind of local resort based? How do we enhance that within spa? Because spa is a key element of that experience. And so it, it is changing the way that we look at our business. It is changing the way in which we design spa as well for that different guest. And I think it is it's a different it is a different opportunity for us, which wouldn't necessarily have been at the forefront of our minds if this hadn't have happened. Look, Alison, you've demonstrated why people should come to the, the conference. And Jongi's interested, get, you really have. I'm really looking forward to that panel in April. Jongi, I was going to wrap up, but go on, say something, please. One very quick question, um, Alison, because we, we would also love to hear from you why people should come. Obviously, listening to you, they, they should come. They have to come. They have to ask questions. But uh, um, one quick question about th this new guest and redesigning the spas uh, as uh, you are overseeing 76 uh, countries. Couples are back yeah. big time. And so many spas have one VIP or duo treatment room, maybe two and five, six, seven singles. How do you reconfigure those treatment rooms for people having been in lockdown, social distancing? Now they want to spend an hour and a half in a treatment room with four people, two people receiving a massage and two people giving it, you know, yeah. 
Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And that we have seen that and I'll, I'll have some figures that we, we've been tracking this couple's usage because it has been it has been one of those kind of, again, with the local guest, it's been more phenomenal. Again, it picks up on this element of the local guest, people locally coming together. Now, you think people may have had, a, you know, they may have had enough of being together with the, the, or the significant other for all this time. But actually, you know, we're finding that in a lot of spaces, it's where one of the party was a spa goer. And they've actually said, you know, bring the other person with them who may be a little bit more reticent about using spa, but, be, but because of that trust, they're bringing them with them. So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing not just um, a, a growth in couples, but we're seeing in groups as well. So groups, groups of, of, of ladies, but also men coming together, and especially in, in the Middle East where we have specific male orientated spas. So we're seeing that groups kind of coming back together. So treatment rooms are always a little difficult. So we have been looking at where we can do it. And, and, you know, unless you've got a really small treatment room, there are ways in which you can get two to get two together. But we've looked at how we can how we can use communal spaces. So how can we do things, you know, in our hotels where we may have relaxation rooms? Actually, is it better to, to, to convert that relaxation room to a double treatment and flex the space? So a lot of it is about actually how do you take that space and looking again at what the space have you got in the spa and say, okay, well, that may traditionally have been a relaxation space, but actually, is it better is it better for us to actually create it into a group space if we can accommodate four people in there or couples in there? So I think it's just about being, being flexible and really kind of maximizing the space that you've got rather than being more traditional on what was a treatment room. It doesn't have to be the external treatment room anymore. You know, you can use external spaces, you can use cabanas, you know, Know, there's lots and lots of ways in which you can bring people together as long as you've got a great portable couch and you've got a great app and you can create a great atmosphere that's what you really need you see my, my point exactly mark and, and, and i'll let you have the last word this is what world wellness uh, world spine and, and wellness convention is all about yes there are golden nuggets yes there is expertise and insight but there is this energy this zest to do better every time and to share Thank you for that, Alison. Well, I look forward to seeing you, Jean-Guy de Gabriac, World Wellness Weekend, and of course, Alison Ainsworth of Marriott, 3rd and 4th of April in London. WorldSparWellness.com is the website. Thank you both very much. See you in April. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Take care.